Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fulman Adventure Club and today we're going to be checking out this little 10 amp charge controller by LNEX. They sent this to me for free for a review and I thought we'd do some fun experiments with it to kind of show you how we could maybe get a, a car with a dead battery back on the road if you don't have jumper cables and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a jump starting a car uh, with just solar and a charge controller and we're also going to show you how that how the little charge controller performs and how it'd be hooked up in a more conventional say RV or home solar setup. So why don't we jump right into checking this guy out while we try and get this car running using nothing but this charge controller and a solar panel. Okay this is my Jeep that I've been using to haul water sometimes and it's been sitting up here for a really long time and the battery's starting to go out on it so I'm betting it's not going to start. Let's give it a shot. Okay, we've got some lights so you can see the battery gauge is all the way down so let's try and start it. That is a no-go. You can see that battery's just toast. So in the box here, opening this little charge controller up, we do have a little manual, you have some protective foam, and then you have the unit itself, which does have a removable backing, as well as all the hardware, you know, screws and bolts that you would need. And then you just put that outside cover on. This is IP65 waterproof, so it could be mounted on the outside of a vehicle. Rain is not gonna hurt this guy. Lots of multiple protection from short circuit protection, reverse discharge, over temperature, over voltage, all that stuff. So there's really nothing you can do wrong to hook this guy up, it's gonna protect itself. So on the front of the unit here, you're gonna see a little battery indicator with a plus and a minus. So we're gonna hook up these little jumper cables here. You're gonna to wanna to use proper wire connections, but I'm just doing this really quick and dirty. So you just wanna make sure you have the positive connected to the correct terminal and then screw in the negative as well. And those are connected to our little battery jumper cables right here. Now I have this solar wire that I'm gonna go ahead and connect to our solar panel. So we're gonna run that over to uh, the solar panel and we're gonna connect these as well. This will accept very large wiring. Of course, again, you're gonna wanna use the proper wire connectors, but these are pretty thick gauged wire and I'm just doing it quick and dirty and I was able to screw those directly in. So we're gonna put that out of the way so it doesn't fall off and then we're gonna connect it to the battery. And as we do so, you can see our battery's at 8.4 volts, very, very low. You're also gonna to wanna to select your battery type. So you hold down the battery indicator until it blinks and then you can cycle through wet, AGM, calcium, lithium iron phosphate, lithium. We're gonna go with wet, which is uh, all, another way of saying lead acid battery. So we have it set to wet and I'm gonna connect our solar panel. This is a Labrids portable solar panel at 240 watts. And as soon as I connect that, we can see on the display here that we go from 8.4 volts. Solar panel's connected now. And that's gonna immediately jump up to 11 volts because we now have uh, 10, 11 amps of power running into the battery. And if you would like to check, if you'd like to switch to the display from voltage, you can just push this button right here. That's gonna show how many amps you have coming in through the charge controller. We're at 11.1 .1 amps. And if you press it again, it's gonna show the amount of amp hours that you've put into the battery. And one more press takes you back to the battery voltage. So we're gonna let that run for about 15 minutes and see what happens. Okay, so the camera's been running for 25 minutes, but we've really only been connected for about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes and we're at 12.8 volts. Let's see if that was enough to start her up. Here we go. Battery gauge looks better already. Here we go. There we go. Back on the road again. So also, and I've done this in the past, you can use a, uh, you know, just a 100 watt panel if you want. You can put it up on the roof rack of the Jeep up there, run some wires down into the cab, mount this guy permanently inside, and then run some wiring to your battery with an inline fuse. And this will pretty much just keep your battery topped off and charged every day that it's in the sun. And with that charge controller, it'll make sure that it's not charged too much, you know, so overcharged, which would damage the battery. And that way your car will just always be ready to start, no matter how long you store it. Now when it comes to hooking this up in a more traditional setup you would see in a house or RV, you're simply gonna have your solar panel going into the solar charge controller, which is then gonna go down and charge the battery. We've seen that demonstrated, but then as the other step, you're gonna hook the battery up to your power inverter for running AC appliances, lights and gadgets and stuff like that. But that's the basic setup right there. 
Now this is my setup with the, with the house. It's actually running both of my pumps using these two 100 amp hour batteries in parallel, going to this 3000 watt inverter. And the batteries are being charged by the LNEX charge controller, bringing in 10.4 amps. So I left this for three weeks uh, running the pumps and charging the batteries, it's actually doing quite well. So the batteries have never drained on me so far. They're getting, I'm using about 240 watts. You can see we're pulling in 11.9 amps there according to the controller. 11 amps is indeed flowing into the battery, so it is still functioning after three weeks of pretty heavy use, even producing an extra amp or two more than it's rated for from those solar panels. So it's been working very, very well and the pump rooms were running flawlessly. You can also use this to add a solar array to an already existing one. So I already have solar coming in about 300 watts, but you can see we're still about 13 amps uh, shy of being in the positive. So I'm using more energy in the basement than I'm actually bringing in with solar. But I was able to just directly connect this little charge controller to get that extra 10 amps into my system. And you can see we're at negative 13 amps right there. And when I disconnect the LNEX, that's gonna go up to about 22 um, because we're gonna lose that extra 10 amps. So it's gonna be negative 22 when I pull this little guy off. And there you go. So you could tell it was bringing in uh, 10, 11 amps into the system. And that's on top of the other solar array that I have. So I was able to add this little solar array directly to my battery using this charge controller. And that gives me an extra 10 amps closer to uh, being positive with my solar coming into the basement. So when I hook it back up, you can see that goes from 22 down to 12. So it's working flawlessly and you can easily add more solar arrays to your system with this little guy. Well, there you go, guys. I had a lot of fun doing those little tests. It's a really good charge controller so far. Like I said, I've been pushing into the test for about three weeks now, and it's actually been putting out 11 amps. Um, so one amp over its rated capacity, no problems whatsoever. The batteries are receiving that 10, 11 amps daily, and it's working quite well. This is a pretty affordable charge controller. Link in the description down below that'll take you straight over to it if you're interested. But um, you really need a charge controller in the system. You could hook a solar panel directly to a battery and it would charge, but then it would continue to charge and damage the battery, which could cause either damage to the battery or off gassing, uh, which could lead to an explosion or some bad stuff, but hopefully just it destroys the battery and there's no fire or anything like that. But a charge controller is always important to have in line. This one's very affordable, it's working quite well. And you could add multiple 10 amp charge controllers like this one um, to the same battery bank using different solar panels. So let's say you have like two or three different solar panels or arrays uh, that are different voltages or different sizes and stuff like that. Um, you can't combine those into one charge controller, but you can have multiple charge controllers and have the solar array go into that charge controller and then down to the battery, and then a different array come into controller number two and then straight into the battery. So you can add on to a system like that if you have a couple of extra solar panels. This one handles about 200 watts. I've been running 240 watts into it for three, three weeks and it's been putting out about 11 amps in the sun. So it's doing quite well and I'd say that's about your capacity for one of these guys, but it's working quite well. So if this video is helpful or fun in any way, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. And until the next video, thank you so much for watching guys and happy camping.